Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Abbott, and today we're going to be talking about analyzing and evaluating poetry. This is really going to be mainly about how to look at your other, your own poems, but also the poems of others uh, to get an idea of how well they're doing. And so there's going to be some essential vocabulary you should know with the concept of analysis. Uh, there will be this acronym, SOAPSTONE, that I'm going to be giving you. You should know what each of those pieces are. And uh, the concept of evaluation and how it differs from analysis, because analysis and evaluation are two slightly different things. And so first, uh, when we're analyzing a poem, we're taking a closer look at the piece of poetry and seeing how the poem is created. How is it creating its message? Um, when you want to analyze a poem, I would recommend having a solid kind of uh, method for doing this. Um, if you analyze a poem the same way every time, it can really bring your analysis to a new level and make sure that you don't leave things out or you don't miss things. And the benefit of analyzing a poem is it allows you to kind of take a look at certain questions that help you oftentimes to get a deeper understanding of what the poem is about. And so we want to use this acronym SOAPSTONE, which uh, stands for Subject, Occasion, Audience, Purpose, Speaker, and Tone. If you can remember this ac uh, acronym, you can use it to analyze poetry, your own and others in the future. And so starting off with just the subject. And so we want to ask ourselves, what are the main thematic topics of the poem? And what is the best statement of theme for this poem? If you don't know what a thematic topic or a statement of theme is, I would recommend viewing my video on uh, identifying thematic topics and making uh, uh, theme statements. Uh, it's going to be very important to uh, be able to look at theme and to match the theme of your poem in order to talk about your poetry and others. Next is the occasion. So what is the setting of this poem or what are the events around which this poem took place? Uh, and so setting you can think of as place and time. And this is really kind of for the author. And so this might require doing a little bit of uh, biography searching for the author. Knowing who the author is and what was going on in the world at the time that this was written, um, you know, can really help with the occasion. And so sometimes the poet will tell you what the theme or what the occasion was, right? They'll say, uh, like Robert Frost, I was riding along on a snowy evening, right? And I saw this field and thought about this. Then the occasion would be like, okay, the, the poet was going for a ride and they noticed a field and was struck by the beauty. That's the occasion. It's kind of like, what was the trigger? What triggered the poet to write this? And if there is no real trigger, when you look at the occasion, yeah, then you just want to kind of take a look at who is this poet? When did they live? Where did they live? Because sometimes where and when somebody lives will influence what they're writing about and what that means. The next thing you want to look for is who is the audience? Who is the poem written for? Uh, is it written for a person in particular? Is it written for the poet themselves? Is this poet trying to reach a certain audience when they're writing their poem? And if so, it goes into the next question of purpose. Okay, so now we know that the author has this audience. Well, what do they want from their audience, right? Are they trying to entertain them? Are they trying to inform them, persuade them, educate them, satirize something? Uh, so in if you if the answer is yes, then what? What are they trying to persuade them of? What are they trying to inform them of? What are they trying to educate them on, right? What are they trying to satirize? Um, and so why do they write this poem? What is it they eventually want from that audience that they are writing to? Uh, because anytime somebody is writing something, they essentially want something from the reader. And so identifying what a poet wants from the reader can be helpful in understanding what the poem is about. Lastly, or not lastly, but second to last, is the speaker. And so just it's important to remember who's talking in a poem doesn't always need to be the poet. Sometimes a poet will write in somebody else's voice, and this person may believe things that the, uh, the, the speaker of the poem does not. For example, um, the writer of the poem. Sometimes poets will, uh, or you know, authors in general, might write from the point of view of somebody they don't agree with, right? 
uh, and so uh, I've seen sometimes where uh, poets will take on the voice of like a racist or a bigot. And through using that voice, they make that person look like an idiot to point out, hey, these people are, you know, they're wrong and they're idiots, right? But they do that by pretending to be them uh, and showing their own uh, ignorance, right? Um, and they do that by writing a voice that's not their own. Um, so this person could reflect one of the poet's emotions, such as anger, jealousy, love, or hopelessness. Uh, it could be an extreme, um, like zoom in of a, of a author's um, uh, feelings, but it doesn't really represent everything they think, right? Uh, and so this is one way that uh, a poet can really kind of express ideas that they might otherwise have trouble with expressing, right? And so this person doesn't really need to be like the poet at all. And so one of the things you want to do is, is identify, is the speaker the poet or is the speaker supposed to be somebody else? Is the voice of the poem not written in the poet's voice? Uh, this is something that can be pretty important to understand. And then finally, the tone, right? And so the tone is the speaker's attitude towards their own poem, right? Uh, is the speaker in awe or over underwhelmed? Like, are they being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the nature of beauty? Uh, or they might be like, yeah, beauty, seen that, done that. Um, are they being disrespectful or reverent? Are they being dismissive? Or are they invested in the topic? Are they passionate? Are they detached? Are they confused or are they clear? Uh, all of these things help to determine how you can interpret the poem, right? If a, if a poet is uh, talking about a poem and they are detached uh, and confused, they don't seem to really care about the poem they're writing about, you know, at least that question of like, okay, why is the poet writing this way? Um, but you can tell uh, typically the tone of the poem through the diction that the, uh, the author is using, right? And it really changes the way the reader reacts to the poem, because typically the reader will adopt uh, the, the poet or the speaker's attitude towards their own poem. And so it's time to analyze a poem. And so we're going to take a look at an Emily Dickinson poem here. Uh, and we have, if I can start, stop one heart from breaking, it goes, if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life, the aching or one cool pain or help one fainting Robin onto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. Okay. And so the subject of this is helping gives uh, life meaning and value. Uh, it could be that the author is really kind of talking about her own poetry here. Uh, the occasion uh, here, it doesn't seem like there's anything really prompting this poem. And so I just write that Emily Dickinson lived in America in the mid to late 1800s. Um, so her poetry is kind of tied to that time period and thought patterns. Uh, the audience, uh, Emily Dickinson wrote this poetry for herself. Uh, Emily Dickinson was a uh, like notorious recluse. Uh, she kind of didn't leave her house uh, she wrote most of her poems, never intending to publish them. Uh, so she's, she seems to be writing to herself and recording her thoughts here. Uh, the purpose uh, seems to be to enlighten the reader or to record a moment of enlightenment for a poet where she realized uh, what her purpose on the planet is or what can make her life worth living. Um, I don't have any reason to suspect that the speaker is anybody but the poet. And the tone is hopeful, serious, and inspired. Uh, the speaker seems to genuinely mean the words uh, spoken and the value of the message. And so the next thing we want to do when we're analyzing is also take a look at a lot of the concepts we've learned before, right? Imagery, figurative language, phonic devices, meter, and rhythm. And so the imagery, uh, really the most, uh, you know, visual image is the idea of the fainting robin. Uh, gives a clear picture of what it looks like to help something. Uh, figure of language, we have heartbreaking, life aching, cool pain. They're all metaphors or metaphorical figurative language. Um, the first stanza is more figurative, whereas the second stanza is a little bit more literal. And this seems to express the concept in the first stanza and give a record of it in the second, uh, or give an example of it in the second. Uh, phonic, phonic devices, uh, Dixon uses end rhyme with breaking and aching and vain, pain, and again. Again, can be pronounced to rhyme with uh, vein and pain uh, between the other stanzas. Uh, as far as meter and rhythm go, I marked the syllables at the end of each line. This is a nine syllable, six syllable, nine syllable, four, seven, six, six. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of specific kind of 
rhythm uh, to this poem. Uh, and so it seems to just be written in free verse. And as far as the word choice goes uh, in diction, the author used the standard academic English. Language isn't overly academic or colloquial, which would be just uh, the language used in speech. And so those are the parts of analysis. You want to go through and do a soapstone and then just take a look at the, the concepts we've learned in class, such as imagery, figurative language, phonic devices, meter rhythm, and diction and word choice. And so next we want to go into evaluating poetry. And this is really a question of how well does the poem do its job? So once you've analyzed the poem and once you've looked at whether or not the poem what the poem means and how it creates meaning, you want to ask yourself, how well does it do it? And so you should never evaluate a poem until you fully understand it. Um, and typically you'll be evaluating your own poetry more so than that of others. I really want you to use this tool for your own poems rather than kind of taking a look at other people's poems um, because you want to make sure your poetry is doing the job that you think it's doing. Uh, and so being able to evaluate your own poetry is really important. And there are really three questions uh, to evaluating a poem. We want to ask ourselves, what is the central purpose of this poem? How fully has the poem accomplished this uh, central purpose? And how important is the purpose, right? And so looking at Emily Dickinson again, uh, we can ask, what is the central purpose? Well, the poem uh, is seemingly meant to enlighten the reader or record a moment of enlightenment. She discusses how her impact on the world justifies her existence. Uh, she could be talking about uh, her own poetry as well, right? Like when she's saying, if I could stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. Well, how might she do that? By have, being a poet who's read uh, and people um, can uh, read her poetry and somehow get ease from uh, pain or heartbreak. I think that's a pretty um, standard um, goal and purpose from a lot of poetry. And so really, how fully has this purpose been accomplished? I uh, kind of um, go into a little bit of an explanation here. I say Dickinson seems to achieve her purpose well here. She gives the concept in the first stanza and backs it up with a concrete example in the second. However, the metaphor of heartbreaking is a bit cliche, and the image of helping an injured bird is, a simple, it is simple and misses some of the deeper questions about what it means to help. It could be said that avoiding deeper questions focus, focuses the poem, but I think this poem doesn't really bring much beyond a grade, the school understanding of how our actions impact others. I don't see this poem as adding much to the philosophical discussion of what justifies existence. It achieves its purpose, but there's nothing new or surprising here. And so it's kind of a mixed review. Yeah, it does what it's supposed to be doing, but there's nothing really new or mind blowing about what she's doing. And so uh, the question of how fully has it been accomplished, I would give her a C if I had to give it a grade, right? Uh, and the last question is um, how important is the purpose, right? Uh, so the purpose of this poem is one of the most important purposes in writing, to theorize and record thoughts about existence. Uh, the poem doesn't fail by attempting to talk about something unimportant. It just doesn't really add much that is new to that conversation. And so the last thing we want to ask ourselves when we're analyzing the poetry, was the purpose of this poem really even worthwhile, right? Uh, if somebody um, was to write a poem about, uh, you know, uh, their love of the, um, I'm trying to think of a random meme, um, but they could do, uh, <laughs> they, I, um, they could be writing a poem about their love of the uh, corgi, uh, uh, can't think of what the corgi meme was, um, but anyway. You would have to ask yourself, well, is it really that important that the readers know your love of that corgi meme, um, what does you have to say about that? Are you really writing something that that will, uh, you know, um, reach the reader? And sometimes I see students um, writing stuff like this, where they'll be like their poem, especially like freshmen, they'll be like, "I feel like having a taco. I think I will end this poem and go eat a taco." And it's just like, great, uh, nobody cares uh, that poem didn't really have an important purpose. You're not educating anybody by sharing how much you really want to go have a taco, right? And so this is really kind of the evaluation part. Uh, did the author do what they were trying to do? 
How well did they do it? And was it worth doing to begin with? Uh, and these are all parts that can go into evaluation. And you can ask yourself when looking at your own poetry, um, whether or not this poem is really kind of uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And is it worth doing? And so other questions to ask, uh, you can ask yourself, does this poem oversimplify a complex topic? Uh, and so really Emily Dickinson, that's kind of one of the problems of that poem that I mentioned earlier, where she mentions like, oh, if I can uh, ease the pain of one person, then my uh, life will have been worthwhile. But that's a complex topic. I mean, what does it mean to ease pain, right? Um, you know, if we think about her example of like helping a bird back into his nest, like, yeah, that helps the bird. But is that bird seriously injured? Is it just going to die anyway? Uh, are you helping that bird by denying a fox a meal? So if you're helping that bird, are you hurting something else? It's a complex topic. Uh, and the system of interchange in life is really uh, an incredibly complex thing, but she's making it seem really simple, where it's like you do nice things and you will have uh, lived your life well. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's a complex topic that's being oversimplified. Um, ask yourself, is the poem like a beautifully wrapped present, but with no real gift or the opposite, right? And what I mean by this is this a poem that just has beautiful rhymes and beautiful language and uh, beautiful sound, but it doesn't really say anything. Um, you don't really learn anything from it besides the fact that it sounds nice. Or does it have a really important message, but it's given in such plain language that there's real no, no real beauty to the, to the language, right? And so you want your poem to both sound good, but also have a message, right? And then also ask yourself, is the poem overly preachy, right? And this can be another pitfall people can go into where the, the poet just sits there and preaches about how great, how what they think is, um, and just makes the reader feel like, oh, this person just thinks they're the best person ever, and they just want to tell everybody how to live their life, right? So these are all things to watch out for. And so looking back, um, we have the essential vocabulary. Do you know what poetic analysis is? Do you remember what soapstone is and uh, how it's used? And do you remember what it means to evaluate a poem and what the three questions for evaluating a poem are? Uh, if you don't, you may want to go back and review the video. Otherwise, let's take a look at your lesson. Let's take a look at your lesson seven for analysis and evaluation. The purpose of this is I want you to get used to seeing what makes a poem effective and using, looking at your own poetry to make sure that it's working out the way that you intended it. And so you're going to be analyzing and evaluating two poems. One should be your own poem, and the second one should be a published author's poem. So what you're going to be doing is you'll do a soapstone analysis. You'll take a look at the poetic techniques we've learned before, such as imagery, figurative language, phonic devices, diction, meter, and rhythm. And then finally, evaluate the purpose. What is the purpose? How well has this purpose been achieved? And how important is the purpose? And so if you scroll down, you'll see I want you to copy a poem of yours here. Actually put the poem here. And then I want you to go through and do a soapstone of your own poem. And I have little questions here that can help you guide yourself through your soapstone. Next, go through and tell me about the devices that you've used, the imagery, figure of language, all the stuff we've talked about in our lessons. And then finish off by telling me about the, the poem's purpose, how well you think it's been accomplished, and how important you believe this purpose to be. And so that's what you want to do by starting off with your own poem. This will be part of what I'm going to be expecting of you from your final poetry portfolio, where you'll be writing an analysis and evaluation of all the poems you put in there. And then you're going to find a published poem of an author you enjoy, or just a random author that you want to just take a look at their poem. You're going to do the same thing for the published author's poem, where you look at the soapstone, the different type of devices they're using, and then take a look at the purpose. And so this is your assignment number seven, where you're going to really start looking at your own poetry and analyzing and evaluating it to see how effective you were. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during class so I can help you with anything you need. And thank you for watching this, and we will meet in class. Good luck.